Okay, cool. So welcome, everybody. I am so excited. Um, today, we're going to get started with our two amazing guests, um, all the way from Rocket City, our Rocket City ladies. Um, I wanted to give everybody a quick little background um, of how I met Holly and Lisa. Um, it was kind of a funny story. So they were um, commercial agents down in Florida, had never met them before, and they were calling around um, to inquire about KV Core, right, ladies? Um, yes. They called KB Core, the owners of KB Core, and KB Core sent them to Kevin Call, my husband, and said, talk to this guy. He knows a lot about KB Core and they've been using it. So Kevin gets a call from, I can't remember which one of you, probably Holly. Yes, both of us. Both, both of, of us. We're always together. <laughs> the duo, the dynamic duo. Um, and he gets a call and he starts talking to ladies about KB Core and, um, then for whatever reason, he patches them through to me and they were curious about EXP and that was not even on your radar. Um, and so I remember I was sitting in a hotel room on a Zoom just like this and we start talking about EXP. I think I was at shareholders at the time and we just you started are. talking about KB Core, how we put it in our business and um, the new model that we were in and the girls ears just perked up and they were very, very curious. And I think within two weeks, you ladies like onboarded to our commercial division at EXP, which was in its infancy because you've been here for what, three years now? Mm -hmm. Three yes. years. 2021. And, mm -hmm. 2021. And so um, they not only are top producers, I think last year, ladies, and correct me if I'm wrong, you were just you know north of 60 million in your business uh, for commercial. Um, you've been doing it for many, many years. I'm going to let you ladies introduce yourself. But what I love about these ladies is they are wicked smart. Um, they know they are top, top producers in their field. They're women, which is exciting because we don't have enough women in commercial and, um, and they're going to help you all do more deals in commercial and also talk about the EXP experience within the commercial, um, uh, you know, value proposition, which I think is at its infancy. And these ladies are helping develop our programs grow resi Marshall. So the floor is yours, ladies. I am so excited to welcome you, but give everybody a little bit of your background and then dive right into your slides. The floor is yours. Sure. Thank you. We usually start our presentations with, hi, it's the Rocket Ladies. <laughs> hi, Rocket um, ladies. <laughs> and we are super happy to be here today and appreciate everything that Tina and Kevin did for us. She has a, a little bit different memory than we do. It took us several months because we had like millions of questions to ask, but you answered every single one of them. And um, I think after three or four months, we, we dove in, in in January of 2021. So we'll get into that a little bit in our story, but just incredible how it happened. And we always call that divine intervention and really be, feel like it was a, a faith thing that led us here to EXP with Tina and Kevin. So um, we're going to share our screen and we've got a few slides presented to present for you. So today we're here to talk about commercial explained the EXP way and um, I'm going to just start by telling you a little bit about myself. I started in commercial real estate at the age of 18. I was in college and I was renting hangar space and office space at the executive airport in New Orleans, Louisiana, and didn't know where you know my career was going to take me. I was studying in broadcast journalism at the University of New Orleans, and um, I really enjoyed the real estate side, but again, didn't know where my career was going to take me. After that, I went on to work for the Residence Inn by Marriott, which is an extended stay hotel, then HQ Regis, which is a fully furnished office turnkey office solution, and then landed at a developer. And that's really where I got very interested in real estate. I was from the charrette. And if you don't know what that is, it's from the infancy stages of a development where you do a bubble plan of what the development is going to look like all the way to the punch out for the final move-ins of the tenants and really enjoyed seeing the projects come to life. I was a project manager for eight and a half years with a national developer here in the well, in the Orlando area. And when I left there, I still had the burning desire to be in real estate in some fashion. So I was a consultant 
um, for a construction company. And after that, or while I was doing that, I um, met Holly and wanted to help here in the Titusville market on a mixed use project. And that's how we met. And I decided to go ahead and get my real estate license because I didn't have to have one when I was working for the developer and um, started just my career on my own instead of working for someone else. While I was with the developer, I, I worked with local um, companies as well as national chains like Whole Foods and um, large universities, hotels, um, on all of their mixed use projects throughout the Orlando area and a large project in the Richmond, Virginia area. It taught me a lot about the entire development process and the leasing and the marketing and um, I was just very fortunate to meet Holly and have both of us are, are we're so different, but yet so alike and our differences complement each other and our likeness complement each other. And we've been able to build an incredible business because of that. I would totally agree with that. I um, I think it's important for us to kind of share our background because we didn't just get a real estate license and jump jump out there and get successful in commercial real estate. It was like Lisa said in her career and, and what led up to that. And in mine was in government relations, politics, economic development. I always worked in nonprofit. Um, I've written grants and raised help raised millions of dollars for for several organizations and really saw a ripple effect in my community of the impact we could make through all of those avenues. Um, but the only person making money in that was was not me <laughs> um, on a nonprofit salary. And so when I worked as the legislative aide for a, a very influential county commissioner here who really helped the Space Coast recover after the ending of the shuttle program, and that's when I met Lisa. Um, and I had decided I wanted to go into commercial real estate because I knew how hard I worked and um, hopefully was hoping for that big paycheck at the end of it um, and helping my community at the same time. So I searched for a well-established commercial firm in our area um, to hang my license. And I was a newbie, so I had to go in and take the grunt work and I worked with them for a couple of years and really got a good mentorship, um, learned about um, all the different aspects of retail and office and industrial. And really, um, one of the things I'll encourage anyone who wants to do commercial real estate is that you have to learn the language. There's a lot of different terms that are way different than residential. And I'll say I started out in residential just because I wanted some bread and butter and I had to close some deals. And I say that like it's easy. It's not easy. And I did three residential deals. One was selling my own house. One was my neighbor's house. And um, one, we spent hours and hours on evenings and weekends with a couple that ended up saying they were just looking for decorating ideas. That was the last time I ever showed a house. Um, it was just a, not my passion. My passion was more in the deal and the art of the deal and finding solutions for the, the business community and seeing how that changed our community. So um, at that commercial brokerage, um, they encouraged us to set goals. And at the end of my second year, I had set the goal of becoming a broker, a broker associate. Um, as a woman in commercial real estate, I felt like I needed a little bit more credential to, to really be taken seriously. And um, they encouraged me to do that. And then uh, three months later, when I got that, and I came in and announced, hey, I'm a broker associate, let's change my business cards. Um, in the real world of commercial real estate and, and brokerages outside of EXP, that's very threatening because then I could open my own brokerage, I could leave, I could take business. Um, and so um, just that day, an hour later, they asked me to leave that firm. And I was kind of lost at that moment. What do I do now? Um, I've just built this two year real estate career and I was get, gaining some momentum. And um, I turned in my keys and I called Lisa and I said, hey, guess what just happened? And there was probably some tears involved in that. But, um, and Lisa said, well, and I'll just tell you from the start, I am a um, stick your toe in the pool kind of person. And Holly's like, I don't even need a swimsuit. Let's just jump in. <laughs> and I, I immediately said to her, we got this. Let's change our community because I had just moved to the Titusville area. I was going to hang my license with um, the construction company that I was doing business development with. And but I was still driving into Orlando to go to doctors and my husband and I were driving north and south to go to places to eat. And I said, well, if we open something in our market, we could truly change our market. And so we opened our brokerage in 2019. Um, we did that by really focusing while we were waiting on the licenses to 
go active with DBPR, which I think took about four weeks. We sat down and we wrote that business plan that we didn't have when I said yes. And I, after I hung up, I'm like, wait a minute, we don't have a business plan or a marketing plan. And I felt like I was going to throw up, but I, my nerves were calm because I knew we had some time. Um, from the beginning, we decided that we were going to be a marketing company first and a real estate company second, because we felt like that was really what was lacking in the real estate business. Um, and so we had a logo professionally designed. We came up with the name Rocket City Real Estate at that time. Um, and we searched and we found out it was not nationally trademarked, if you can believe that. So we went ahead and hired a trademark attorney and we um, trademarked our logo nationally. Uh, we had big goals. Our goals from the beginning was that we were going to grow our brokerage and we were going to um, franchise at some point in time. And so we wanted to start really building that brand. Um, we also had a very big goal of having 30 listings in 30 days. And while it sounded scary, again, we had time to put all of our contacts in a database and really hone in on who we were going to call the minute our, our license went live. And um, we achieved that goal 30 listings in 30 days. And our marketing um, that we decided to do with that was um, we had all of our signs installed over a weekend and so they were all installed over pretty much you woke up the next morning and there were hot pink signs all over north brevard 30 actually 60 of them because they're v-shaped and um we went to facebook immediately and we, there's launches all the time here with the with the rockets and um we said, did you see the launch this weekend, which there wasn't one, and we said the launch of our new business, and, <laughs> and we just got like this roaring likes and comments and all that, oh my God, I saw your signs, you guys are everywhere, how'd you do that, and it was very... Um, very strategic. And that's how Holly and I operate. Just very strategic. Every move is um, very thoughtful that, that we make. So as we grew that um, company, this leads into when we met Tina and Kevin, um, we had been using spreadsheets and just kind of tracking everything old school for ourselves. And we were doing a really good business, um, even in spite of COVID um, during that time. So at the end of um, 2020, we started looking for software. We ended up finding KV Core. It seemed to be an industry standard best with the CRM and every, the outreach, the leads, everything it could do. And we were looking at how we could adapt that to commercial. Um, and again, we met Kevin through that because they told us to give him a call and, and see how it worked for their brokerage and really just discovered the EXP logo at the bottom. Kevin didn't try to hard sell us EXP. I'll have to go back to probably a year and a half before that we were approached by someone to join EXP and, um, they did it under the guise of let's have lunch. I might like to join Rocket City Real Estate and kind of tricked us into a lunch meeting. And I, I always say, it's kind of like when you're shopping in the grocery store and the lady comes up to you and says, oh my gosh, you have beautiful skin. Would you like to have a makeover party with you and your friends? And it's the Mary Kay lady. And before you know it, you've signed up to be a distributor. It, it just <laughs> felt like that to us. Nothing against Mary Kay. I love yeah. her products. We needed a shower yeah. after. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was a tough sell. So then it was so refreshing to talk to Kevin and, and we had written off EXP. We we're like building our own brand. We're going to do our own brokerage. We're going to be so rich. We're going to have franchises. What we found out was the brokers always broke. <laughs> and after talking to Kevin and realizing, um, you know, he wasn't hard selling it. We had to pull the questions about EXP out of him until he put us on the phone with Tina. And we just loved her spirit. And all of you on here, you must know Tina. It's just such a like-mindedness and the same mission of changing people's lives, um, and which spans from agents to clients to community. It's just really like-minded. And we so after that long, intensive um, question and answers that Tina had to answer for everything, um, we had had decided to join EXP in early of 2021. And we were yeah, and I'll just add to what Holly said uh, when she said the brokers broke. When, when we were using our Excel spreadsheets and trying to transition and put our big girl pants on, um, it was going to cost us $1,700 a month to get the software that we currently have with EXP. And that was individually, not as a whole. And so we were trying to understand how are small brokerages paying for this amount of overhead because our overhead was so high as it was. And all of that was coming out of our pocket. And in a commercial real estate, you're not getting paid every 30 days. 
Um, and so we were just trying to figure it out. And so KB Core kept showing us these larger firms. We said, we want to see people that are currently using this. And they'd show us these firms that are using and they have 100 agents. And we're like, well, they're getting commission off of 100 agents. Duh. And then they finally showed us smaller ones that when we asked. And um, they at the time, us, Gina was. Yeah, at the time, agents. she had 12 agents. And so we were like, OK. And so that was a question we asked. How do you afford this, Kevin? And he goes, well, it's $85 a month. And we were like. $85 a month. And he says, yes, I'm with eXp. And so that was the first time that we really took a look at it. And Holly and I became the first commercial um, agents in for eXp in the state of Florida. And it was very refreshing to be able to hop on calls with leadership and kind of help to shape the decisions that were being made just off of our feedback of our onboarding and all of the um, tools that we were using, what was working, what wasn't working. And in a large company with 80,000 agents um, to, to have the ear of leadership, it was just really, really incredible. Yeah. So with eXp Commercial, and we'll get into some of the fees later, but they have great um, software that gave us the ability to focus more on our business. And um, and we had our agents move over with us, several of them. Some didn't want to, to go with eXp, so they left. But um, we feel like the, the ones that embrace the technology and, and the plan are really doing well now that came with us. Uh, we increased our own business by over 150 percent because we could focus more on the sales and we had better tools to do research and outreach um, for commercial properties in our area um, and during 2022 we became certified mentors it's a we were looking at the additional revenue streams available that previous to exp we were mentoring people we were helping people but we weren't getting that additional uh, revenue stream from that so um, and we also became certified business brokers in 2022 through the program with um, EXP Commercial and IBBA, the International Business Brokers Association. So we've been able to grow different revenue streams that apply directly to our business. Um, and then really our, our mentoring program, we're super excited about. Yeah, and we'll go into that at another slide, but um, we continue to um, grow our business. And uh, Tina, we've been on a couple of your Zoom calls where you talk about showing up for work. And that's what we do every single day. We don't need an office, but Holly and I cover the overhead of that. And we are 100% committed to this business and making this work. And I think that's what makes us stand out. Um, we also call people back and um, we are always planning for the future. And um, when we saw a shift in the market during COVID um, and we lost our commercial deals that were involved in the lending that the banks were pulling out of, we shifted to leasing. When we saw that there was interest rates changing and things changing you know, with the economy and just recently with the banks, um, we just know when to shift. You have to shift. You've got to stay ahead of it. It's the difference between Target and Kmart. You have to be agile to be able to recreate yourself on a regular basis and knowing when to do that. And one of those things, like Holly mentioned, was becoming a certified business broker and just looking at the amount of baby boomers that will be selling their businesses over the next 10 years just makes you pause and say, wait a minute, I want a piece of that action because um, there's going to be a huge amount of wealth transferred over um, the the next 10 years um, throughout the United States. And so um, we are mentoring with um, someone out of North Florida that has taken us under their wing. And um, we got our, we were certified in November and we got our first listing in January. And um, we're looking forward to closing that. And because of the mentoring program that we have with the XP through that business brokerage, um, our first listing is over $8 million. And that client trusted us because we could say we are part of this group we our mentor has 25 years experience and so we're not out there on our own and that's one of the collaborative things we love about exp and we tell our new agents is you know use our stats as your as your um, background that you're not out there on your own um and bringing us into we love the 60 million number that tina gave us and maybe that, this year well that was our whole organization <laughs> with all of our agents um combined it was over 60 million but lisa and i personally we worked together on everything and we closed 65 transactions in uh 2022 and we were not really keeping track of that we probably should do a better job of that but um we looked at the stats of what the average commercial agent does and nar says that's about five deals a year so we did 65 um 
That's amazing, ladies. It's amazing in commercial. It's amazing in residential. It's just amazing. So congrats to you both. Nope, did we lose you? I think we lost him. I think we lost him. Oh no. Can you guys see can you guys see that they're stuck or is it just me? Yeah, I can't hear them. Oh, girls, we we lost you. You might have to go out and come back on. Oh darn, sure. they were just getting into all the good stuff. Above the average, Tina. <laughs> there they are. Let's see. Did we lose them? Yep. I, are we back there you're back i don't know what sorry i don't know what happened we do have construction going on next door to us so um they may have hit something but it seems like we are back up and running we're but um okay, our we're we continue to stay focused at the on the uh -oh. we're losing you again ladies Try turning your camera off for a minute and see if that helps, if you can still hear me. Sometimes your connection is better with your camera off if you're getting into a little icky spot. I'm gonna call them real quick. Let me call them. Hi. So we're still, we still can't hear you ladies. So I was gonna say, try to turn your camera off. Um, okay. And sometimes when you turn I your- did that. Okay. Yeah, it, it shut us completely out of Zoom. So I'm logging back in. Okay, so you're logging back in. Um, well, I've got everyone on and they can hear you. I told them I'm gonna call you. <laughs> you gotta love, love okay. technology when it works. Right, all right. Okay, give me one second. I'm going to go grab my phone because I'm talking to you on my Apple Watch. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. good. <laughs> it sounds nice and clear. They're logging back in. I know I want to see your pretty slides. You did such a great job on them. All right, well, we can just kind of talk to you here. Um, you know, a lot of what we want to talk about is our passion for changing lives. And like Lisa was talking about at real estate on a mission, changing lives and in commercial real estate, it just affords you the opportunity to really change your community. Um, we just wanted to share two deals that we did and they're at opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, one is a leasing deal for a barber shop. It was a young guy that um, wanted, he was a barber and he wanted to open his own business. And so we helped him lease a small space. It was like a thousand square feet. Um, we helped him do some of the homework on that. And he ended up opening a beach bum barber and he is four months booked out now. Um, we didn't get paid much on that deal. We probably got a thousand dollars that we had to split in half and give 20% to EXP. But what it did for his family, they were able to adopt a child. Um, they've, they've gone on to um, really grow a great business there the past couple of years. And he's very well known in our community. And we don't take credit for that, but it was just super cool to be part of his mission to get him there. Mm -hmm. um, and so the other opposite end of that is some of the bigger deals we've done with lots of jobs coming to our community. Yeah, one of the larger deals that we did um, right across the street from our current office, there's a 15 acre um, plot of land with, it had two warehouses on it and a two story commercial building. And it has been, it was vacant for 15 years. And my neighbor is into hydrogen manufacturing of tanks, tanks that hold hydrogen. Mm -hmm. And he was talking to me about needing a small office in the area. So I scheduled an appointment for him to meet with me and Holly. And um, through our strategic questions that we were asking him, um, we uncovered that he was going to be opening a huge manufacturing plant in the Nevada area. And so Holly put on her um, local grant hat and started talking to him about the incentives of putting the business here. And um, we were able to sell that piece of property to him, um, the 15 acres. Uh, he since has torn down the two warehouses and has rebuilt one of the warehouses and they are occupying the um, commercial building. And with that came 250 jobs over the next five years, which means a lot more new homes, a lot more businesses in the area. 
And so that ripple effect that was mentioned earlier, it truly takes effect when you are able to do something of this scale in a community um, because of all the jobs that come along with it and the services that people people need um, throughout that. Well, that's awesome, ladies. So tell me a little bit about, um, like, so, so let's say a lot of these agents on the um, line right now, they're not in commercial. I don't think, is anyone in commercial on here? Raise your hand if you do commercial. So, I mean, obviously some of the cameras are off or put it in the chat box. Some, so in at EXP, can you just share some of the things that, um, you know, you mentioned before that you would have had to pay thousands of dollars every month to have some of the tools that you have now. What commercial tools do you have that, you know, if, if they were talking to another e, uh, commercial agent and wanted to bring them over to EXP, like what would be the advantages and what are some of the fees that, you know, you're charged that, um, you know, that we wouldn't know about? We're charged $250 a month mm -hmm. from each fee, and that covers all, that's our cloud fee. So that covers all of the software. Um, and we have an 80-20 split. On the commercial side, our cap is $20,000. And after you pay EXP the 20000 then you are at 100% commission. Um, the tools that Holly and I use the most, but there's lots of tools at EXP. And um, Tina, we can send the slide share over to you guys just so that you can look through it after yeah. um, the call because we put a lot of time into it. I, I know. Oh, look, anyone? Um, oh, there they are. Yeah, we're having construction next door, so that might be what's happening to our internet okay. connection. We might have to work from home the rest of the day today. That's right. um, but we have a slide that kind of explains the EXP. Yeah, if you want to share it, go go right ahead. Get that. And we can send you guys the slide too, but it's $250 a month. Our, mm -hmm. our favorite tools uh, is Reonomy. Um, and I'd like to just kind of pause for a minute and tell a story about Reonomy. Um, Holly and I have a broker friend that works for somebody else. He's out of the Tampa area and he represents Publix all over the state of Florida. And he was trying to um, do some research for public publics in the North Brevard area. And he called and said, Hey, you guys are the experts. Can you help me with that? And he ch showed us the area that he was looking at. And we had a piece that we had listed and we felt directly across the street from that would have been a great spot for Publix. And we had only been with EXP probably two or three months at the time. And so it's hard to break an old habit. I got on the county website and started doing research and an hour and a half in, I stop and I go, Holly, I'm an idiot. I said, I'm still trying to do this on an Excel spreadsheet and by snail mail. And I log into Reonomy. I click on the property. It gives me the property owner's name, their email address and their phone number. I wasn't sure if they were on the do not call list. So I went ahead and sent an email. Within 15 minutes, I got a response and the lady told me that the land was under contract, but if it fell through, she'd reach back out to me. And so it was at that moment that we just really opened our eyes about how quickly we could accomplish something by using the tools that, that we have. So that $250 a month, while it sounds like a lot compared to the $85 a month, the amount of deals, the time that it takes to get to the decision makers. And again, we really focus on listings. Um, we kind of corner the market on that because you're getting 50% no matter whose side it's on. And the majority of those, Holly and I get, I'd say 90% of them, we have both sides of our deals just because of the strategy again, but, um, and Holly, you might want to touch on the um, percentages. I mean, the 80-20 split in commercial is unheard of. I was going to say, well, sure, well, I mentioned 50 typically. No, yeah, at the commercial firm I was with, I was at a 35% split, which could be adjusted to 50, depending on, you wow. know, if I brought in the lead or not. Um, so most of it I did at 35%. At the end of my second year, I had brought in $200,000 in gross commission income for the company. And so I ended up with less than half of that um, for, for me. But it, so it was an expensive education. It was, I, I liken it to going to two years of university and learning and, you know, paying for that. Um, but the 80-20 split is so much better. And we usually cap in the spring. So 100% for the rest of the year is really nice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and we don't know of any commercial firm that offers 100% um, commission. There isn't. And on the 250 a month, 
Tina, um, that always sounds like a lot, but we are not part of the MLS. So okay. it, you know, equating the 85 plus your MLS dues, you're not that far off from the, um, the, the fees that are charged. And with the tools that we get that, like Lisa said, it would be compared to about $1,700 a month if we did it on our own. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah, and we, we talked about Reonomy. Um, you want to talk about build out? Yeah, a bit? build out is something that we used at the previous commercial firm I was with. It's an industry standard, really um, elite program. And that cost starting at $500 a month per agent. Um, and you can build on it and have add ons. So we've got a really good program with EXP uh, commercial. And build out is a software that you can enter your listing in once, kind of like the MLS. Um, but you enter all your information, your photos and everything, and it automatically builds a website, the flyers that you need, and it syndicates to probably a dozen other commercial real estate sites like LoopNet and Crexy. Um, and then it it also from there syndicates to hundreds of others, kind of like the Zillow Realtor.com kind of thing takes it everywhere. So um, it's a really quick, fast way to do a presentation, to get our listings out, and it's dynamic. So when you change it, it, it updates everywhere on all of those listing platforms. So big time saver. One thing I want to add is that when Holly and I um, first started and we logged into Build Out and we took our beautiful logo and we stuck it into the beautiful flyer, um, the orange and blue <laughs> EXP logo came up and all of the blue and orange came up and we called Tina and she's like, oh, no, no. I've got a new logo we're working on. And so we were able to get build out to do a black and white version for the entire commercial side. So again, our branding is so important to us. And so our flyers, our slicks, everything is just that we create and build out is just incredibly beautiful. And we were able to get, you know, leadership to, to do that for us, mm -hmm. which helped everybody. Mm -hmm. I love that. We just wanted to touch on, because this if someone's thinking about doing commercial real estate, you get encouraged a lot to pick a lane and be, a, be an expert in one of the fields of industry. And that's because there's different language for each one, um, ceiling heights and electrical needs and square footage. And um, there's just a lot of different language in leasing. There's CAM and triple net and uh, letters of intent. Um, every single area has its own language. It's, I liken it to like being from Alabama or New York. You know, you got to learn the language when you get there in the culture. Um, so, but in our area, we're we're kind of a second secondary tertiary market, smaller than like a big Orlando or Chicago um, area. So we specialize in our market. We know our market backwards and forwards. We know the jobs coming in, the schools, the um, much like you would know in in residential. Um, we know the area. And we have done transactions in every single one of these categories. So instead of being an industry expert, we're market experts. And that's worked out really well for us. And um, one of the great things about EXP also, and this is another Tina story, is that there's always someone to connect to that can who's had experience that you might not have. Um, we had a, a lease to own warehousing offer come in and we did, we had never done that before. And there was a lot of intricacies to it. So we called Tina and said, who do you know, who can help us walk through this? And within 30 minutes, um, one of her colleagues from South Carolina called us, spent over half an hour on the phone with us, walked us through what that looks like, offered to be there again for us. Um, we ended up not doing that deal, but the that does not happen in private industry, commercial real estate. Everyone's so competitive and so secretive about what they're doing um, to have someone that we could just call who had no stake in the game. I mean, she wasn't asking us for anything. She was just helping us. Um, and we've done that, returned that favor many times over for people who've called us now too. Yeah, and we just had it happen again. We have a multifamily deal under contract and they, they have a billboard on the property and there's easements that are involved there's a lease that's involved and we've never done a billboard sale or lease before and so we reached out to our broker Britt out of the Tampa area and she connected us with somebody that explained to us you know the intricacies of that and how much it's worth and um because we weren't sure is it a cap rate you know what how do you how do you see the value in this and so he he was very helpful in that and it helped us to help our client make the decision um, of how he was going to proceed with that transaction. I love so, those um, ladies. Oh my God, you guys are so cute. <laughs> we have astronaut costumes. Yeah, we are all about branding. Um, my dentist, when we first opened our company, she walked in and I, I have the 
the little thing around my neck and uh, you know the stuff in your mouth and and she walks in and she's like the rocket lady it was my first time meeting her but she had seen our pictures and stuff so um we're like little rock stars I guess in, in our community <laughs> but we just we feel branding is just so incredibly important and it's really what has made the difference again being the marketing company first and the real estate company second but um commercial uh, I think why I chose to be in the commercial industry is the strategicness about it. The, um, the, when I worked for the developer, it was very strategic. You, you, from the planning stages to going vertical on a property, to having the tenants move in, you know, to where, where you were going to actually build that. And so, a lot of times Holly and I will look at a blighted building in our area and we'll go after that building using Reonomy. And before the ink dries on the listing contract, we already know who the end user is going to be. And um, we know what we need in this community and who we're gonna go after. And that's how we get both sides of the deal a lot of times. Um, I love the planning that goes in a deal. I love the negotiations that go in a deal. I love thinking outside of the box um, and the taking the personalness out of it, just having that it's based on a business decision and it's based on strategy. And we do that on a regular basis. We had um, a strategy conversation this morning about somebody we've been working with for about two months um, and seeing how we could uh, make the deal work. We had a strategic um, call yesterday um, with the billboard that we had just told you about. Um, so that's what really excites me. I look forward to coming to work every day. Every deal is different. Um, and it, you just think outside of the box, recycling it at times in commercial real estate. Yeah, I love that. And tell everybody too, um, you had mentioned if they have a deal, let's say they have somebody in North Carolina or certain states that they they want to sell a business, um, that you are able to service that client now for our, our team, right? Yes. Yeah, we, we can do referral basis with anyone. Um, if we did a deal with someone, if you wanted to stay on, you know, involved, if it's a building, obviously we can't be in North Carolina to show it, but we can set up a referral agreement and we can handle the contract part of things and, and help walk through that. We would need someone boots on the ground there to maybe open a building and walk through. And we'd want to have some calls with you to talk about the language and how to speak about it. And we could get on a Zoom call together with the clients um, and help with that. Uh, land uh, would be easier. There's no showing of the property they just drive by, but we can also work on a referral basis with that. And with the business brokering, we can go anywhere in the United States for business brokering. Um, and so some of those transactions could be very, very lucrative. You know, if we're talking about, you know, millions of dollars in a deal or, or long-term leases, uh, we did a, a deal with Planet Fitness, the, the gym um, it was a long-term lease with them and the commission on that's like $54,000. I don't want to make that sound easy because it took about 18 months to get it closed. Um, commercial deals do take a lot longer, but it would take, we feel like it's a great opportunity for um, residential agents to learn a little bit about it, but also just to hand the business over and not have to go through that 18 months of agonizing pain of watching it fall apart and resuscitating it. Um, we love doing that. But um, but then to just get a nice paycheck on the end of that. And we're happy to do referrals on any level. Yeah, it is so different. And so in our market, there's been numerous times where Holly and I, because we have the listing, a residential agent will have somebody that they represent and they'll come in and it, they're not, they don't know the terms, they don't know what they can negotiate, they don't realize the commission structure. And so they're not doing a service for themselves or anybody else. So we usually, when we can sense that, we usually say, can your broker help you with this deal first? And if they say, no, you know, they're not really doing commercial real estate, then we'll offer to take their client and pay them a referral because we want to make sure that their client is represented the best way that they can. And our fiduciary responsibility, if they choose to stay in the game, is to get the best price for our client. And um, we don't want to, it doesn't feel right negotiating against somebody that doesn't know 
about the commercial and what you can ask for in free rent and what you can ask for in TI. And we've had agents that have come in and they'd offer full price on a deal and no TI. And you know that this place needs a lot of work and they've got a startup company that's coming in that's going to realize real fast that they're not going to stay in business long. And so um, we usually, again, say, can your broker help you? And if the broker can't help, we ask them if they would turn it over to us. And then we would transition in, into um, transaction. a transaction Perfect. representation so that we are kind of just the ref and making sure that everything's fair um, for, for both sides. Yeah, I think that's that would be fantastic advice. I know for me, there even our commercial space that we got now, I learned so much and I hired a commercial broker to, to take us and walk us through the process. And it was still bumpy. Um, so I would love to have you ladies on my side doing any commercial deal. And it's just not worth it because I think you're, it's almost selfish. If you don't know that world, it'd be like me trying to go sell a home in Dubai. Like that's how bad it would be. Like, I'm never going to sell a home in Dubai, even though I sell homes here in the States, I don't know what I don't know. Um, and I think having that, you know, that knowledge is, is key. And I'd rather take a referral than mess something up and have somebody come after me. Um, I couldn't, yeah. couldn't live with that. We've, we've got, a it, it would be like us trying to sell a home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't do it. Don't do it. Hey, uh, so we, it looks like we have a question. Somebody's got their hand raised. Tanya, Tanya, not sure which, sorry. Tanya. Go Hi ahead. ladies. Nice to see you. Hi, Hi Tanya. Tanya. Um, so my question, just to reiterate on what you guys just said. So, um, I'm moving to Colorado. I meet someone who wants to expand, buy a building, or do something with commercial. There's EXP agents there, but then there's also you guys, which I've developed a relationship with recently. So you're saying I can refer it to you guys and refer it to that other agent, and then you can work on my behalf? Or are you talking about if the broker is not EXP? So there's certain states that we can work in and there's certain states that we can't. So we can clarify that based, uh, there's a map that EXP offers um, that, that we can have a referral and we can, we can work it as a referral. And then there are certain states that we can't. And they're probably the same ones that, that Realty can't work in. Um, so if it's something that you're talking about in Colorado and someone has, they want to list their building, then they would probably be served better by a local broker within that market. But if it's a land deal that you're not having to go constantly show, then it could be a quick transaction. Um, again, if we are able to sell in that state. Thank you. Love it, love it. Any other questions for the ladies while we have them? Anyone? Anyone? Um, I'd like to say, I see Haley Thomas on here. I'm gonna put her on the spot. Haley is our mentee that has turned into a certified mentor now. And so we'd, we'd just like to hear a little bit from her about what her experience has been. And um, she's actually just become a great expert in commercial real estate. She does Resi Marshall. She does some residential deals and keeps right. the money flowing in her pockets. Um, and then does she's done some of the smaller and larger commercial deals. We're super proud of her, so. Thank you. Sorry. I couldn't be in here earlier because my meeting before ran longer, but um, I really like being Resi Marshall because I feel like the residential stuff really strengthens my negotiation skills. And what's cool about residential is the contracts, in my opinion, are a little bit more clear and concise. And it's the same contract every time, at least in Florida. I'm sure it's the same for other states. Versus in commercial, the contract changes every single time. So I really like being able to buff up my negotiation skills on a contract that I'm really familiar with and kind of build that side of it. And then grow and change when it's a contract that I've probably never seen before, I at least have those negotiation skills that I can kind of transfer over to the new contract or the new type of deal. And I think having those transferable skills is really the biggest asset to being Resi Marshall because while the real estate side of it can be different, there is a lot that crosses over that you can build to be successful in both ways. And I think Colleen and Lisa have done a really good job of teaching me like okay, well, what can we learn from each deal that we can bring forward? And that's what I try to do as I'm, you know, beginning to mentor new agents as well is what can we learn from every single transaction that's going to make us better and serve our clients better. I love that. And Haley, you, you are a newer agent in the Resi Marshall space. What is your take on 
EXP as a brokerage? Because you you haven't been with an old fashioned traditional broker. I mean, you just di- dove right into it. So what's your experience um, being new here at this company? Yeah. So EXP is the only place I've ever hung my license. I've been licensed for almost two years now. And I really like just how collaborative it is here. And I've gotten that feedback because I have a degree in real estate. So I have a lot of friends that are in that that were new licensees around the same time I was. And a, a couple of them actually ended up switching to EXP. And consistently the feedback we get is we love how collaborative it is. I really like that I'm not limited in what I can do, right? So I've never gotten feedback from my broker saying, well, you can't do that deal. Or there's a lot of old school brokers that would say you can't do a commercial lease because we can't insure you for it or because we exactly. can't let you work it. And that's just not the case with EXP. There's always somebody to help you as well. I love workplace. I love freedom builders. I love fast forward movement. How like it's so amazing. Like I'm in a solo agent mastermind with fast forward movement every week. Yeah. And people in it are in like different states all across the country. And I've had people email me and say, Hey, like, can I get your feedback on this? And I just I think that's so huge how connected we are because there's people that I know that worked at like a local like Coldwell Banker branch, but that branch had like 200 agents under one broker and they had no support. They would have been better off at this like crazy big national EXP thing that seems so scary, but really it's so incredibly collaborative and the access to knowledge is so like right on the tips of your fingers here. I think that's probably the best best part. Yeah. And the knowledge is so good, but it's like knowledge with action behind it creates the success. So congratulations for you, Haley. I can tell that you're well-spoken and you're just a rock star and you're a sponge and um, you're going to do great things. I can already tell. So good for you. And you've connected with some amazing ladies over there um, that are fantastic mentors. And um, it's just such a blessing that we have a model that these ladies can take people in teach them, grow them without that worry of, oh gosh, I'm sharing my secrets with all these people. I mean, it's it's a true give back. That's a win-win. So congrats to you all. Um, that's awesome. Welcome. Welcome. Anybody else want to share or um, have a question for these ladies while we have their ear? Because what I love, um, I'll just share with commercial, I've watched it grow and I still, it's still in its infancy. Like we still have how many commercial brokers do we have in the United States? Do we do we know that? There's eight, yeah, there's 860 in the United States and there's 100 in Florida. So there's 860 um, EXP commercial agents. How many commercial agents do, do are there in the nation? Do we know? Like not oh, just- We should people. find that out for our next webinar. We don't know. Yeah, because I know we have like 6 million <laughs> agents on, in the, on the planet, you know, just um, that are licensed. And so- uh, when you think about having only 800 and it's such an old fashioned industry where, you know, people are paying, like you said, you were paying, thir- you were getting paid 35% of every deal here. You're getting paid a hundred percent after you cap at 20 grand. That is yes. unheard of in the commercial space. So I think we have yes. such a big mission to um, get the word out about commercial resi Marshall and all the amazing advantages that EXP has in the commercial space. So um, yeah, I just, I love, I love the opportunity there and I love the the knowledge exchange. I would say we totally agree with that. And one of the things that's been the most fun, um, we love men, um, no, no harshness on men, but being women in a, a male dominated industry and commercial has been a lot of fun. We come, a, come at them and they're very unexpected ways. Um, what's also been fun and, and we call Resi Marshall the dirty word because people in the old school commercial industry think of residential agents who do resi and commercial are, um, I mean, it's just like this negative, like, oh, I don't want to deal with them. They're a residential agent. Oh, they're a realtor. Like, and, yeah. and a lot of times, like Lisa said, it's because they don't have the language or the experience to do it. The mentor. But you get someone like Haley who can come in and she can do either one. And, you know, you say, oh, she just graduated. She's been doing this two years. You know, you talk to her, you just did for 30 seconds and you can be blown away by what she's absorbed in the way that she does a deal. And that is just really to be unexpected and be really good at what we're doing is a lot of fun. And we wouldn't be able to do that without the structure of EXP. Yeah, and Haley uh, showed up again. Um, we She was an intern for us while she was at U- the University of Central Florida. Um, she interned with us. We suggested that she get her license early so we could actually pay her and start working deals. And Holly and I dominate the market in listings. And so we were getting a ton of calls um, for 
our listings and if we couldn't accommodate them because there was an exclusivity where you know you couldn't have another pizza place we would just go so sorry can't help you because we didn't have time to run all over the place with to find this pizza place a spot and so with the leads that we were unable to accommodate when Haley came on as our mentee, um, she did $3 million in sales volume her first year because of what we were turning away. So I just cringe at the fact that over the last couple of years, Holly and I threw away so much of that money. Um, and so if you have someone in your market that you know that is with EXP commercial and they've got a ton of listings and you want to get into the commercial side, call them up and say, hey, can I mentor with you? Can I work these deals with you? I want to learn the side because I guarantee you if they are seasoned and they have that listing, they're not wanting to go drive around and find do a tenant rep with a small startup. They're not going to want to do it um, because, again, their phone's ringing off the hook for big, big, bigger and better deals. But it's a great learning experience. And we worked all of the deals with Haley Um you know, to make sure that she knew what she was doing and she completed our program and is now, and then we encouraged her to become a mentor so that she could pass it forward as well. I love that. I love that. That is the best part about our business. I mean, in, in this model anyway, so it was all just meant to be. Well, I so appreciate you ladies. Um, is there any final thoughts that anyone wants to share or ask? Um, any wins that you've had for the week? I mean, why not end the week with some great wins? I'd love to hear those. And if anyone else is new on here, um, you know, welcome. But uh, but yeah, this has been good, except for our little blip, which will we can cut that part out because we got you back. <laughs> so we've got to love technology. Tanya, you thank you. Question. Sure, go ahead, Tanya. Um, thank you for putting us on. I've heard a lot about you, so it's nice to be on your um, Zoom. Um, so I asked the ladies about expansion in other um, states. So what are your plans there? And have you thought about that? You know, your brand is so good and to be mentored underneath you guys, that seems like a really good opportunity. Yeah, it's something we're growing, you know, being fairly new to EXP and the EXP commercial still kind of working out some of its kinks. Um, we definitely have that on our target this year to strategize and figure out how do we expand. That's the reason that we did our national trademark of our logo, um, because we had originally intended to go everywhere that they launch rockets. And in um, Houston, they call it Rocket City, like it's a common term there, but nobody had trademarked it. So we we're pretty proud of ourselves that they can't call themselves that <laughs> officially. Um, but so we, yes, we would like to expand anywhere there's an aerospace community, which is growing. And like you mentioned, Colorado, California, Virginia, Alabama, Texas, there's a real opportunity to take this Rocket City brand and grow it um, under the EXP model. Yeah, we, ha we have a logo agreement that our trademark attorney has drafted for us. And when we're ready to launch that, um, we are planning on taking it nationwide. I That's think exciting. that would be so fun. Yeah. I mean, because think about how many women, you know, especially would love to be, you know, coached by you in those different cities, right? And so even if you had certain Facebook groups that funneled everybody in, I think not only would it be a great attraction tool, um, but it'd be a great way for um, agents like Haley and Tanya to mastermind with each other and then learn from you ladies. Um, I'm seeing a course in your future. I see a lot of fun things in your future. <laughs> You ladies have <laughs> lots and lots of potential. So um, I'm just proud to know you. You've been nothing but awesome. Every time I'm around you, your energy is just amazing. And what's so funny, if one of them, like I have to say, when one of you wasn't, was it Lisa, you couldn't be at a conference or you couldn't be at EXPCon. Holly shows up. Yeah. She literally has a cutout of Lisa, a full size cutout. And I'm like, you two crack me you up. Two like, crack me. You okay. couldn't okay. even be without each other in your cutout, let alone... Um, <laughs> They're inseparable. She's going to get herself to show you. Yeah. I mean, it's just fun how to watch your relationship, which is hard. It's hard to work with family. It's hard to work with friends. And um, you you both have done such a great job. Oh, there she is. <laughs> well, and people have said to us, you know, people have said, don't you think you need to split up so you can tackle more business? And um, we actually work better together and get a lot more done just because we think so differently. So we can rapid fire instead of one of us doing it. And she had everybody sign my backside I know, I've, that, I've that handled me. Well, and I, I did tell her if she was taking me to Vegas, she couldn't let me go to anyone's room because I didn't want to see that on Facebook. <laughs> 
Well, I love it. I think I have pictures with you and, and the cutout. But what is interesting <laughs> about what you what you just said, Holly, was, you know, we work better together. And I think, you know, we were studying and geeking out right now on the six working geniuses by Pat Lanchoni. You should read that book. And it talks I'm actually about- reading it. Oh, good. What well, in our Freedom Builders uh, group, Anna Powell did a great presentation on it. So if you haven't watched it yet, go back and watch it in the guides. But what it talks about is that, you know, there are six working geniuses. And as you work in, in whatever project at work, at church, where, wherever, in your family, if you're missing some of those geniuses, sometimes projects can go awry. And the fact that you probably encompass four of the six, whether you have maybe two are similar, but you probably have knocked out three to four of the six. So that's probably why you are rocket fuel together. And so what we're learning in our organization as leadership team is we want to have, we want to make sure that we have all six that we're leveraging. So when I'm weak in something, like I have great ideas and discernment, but I suck at, you know, some tenacity work or following through on projects. So I have other people that help. So I love that. Um, You'll love to to finish that book, Lisa. I want to hear your thoughts on, on the six working genius. It's awesome. I will let you know. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us today. And thanks everybody for hanging out with us. And we'll have this recording um, put into our group. Oh, Tiffany, do you have a question? Oh, I thought she was waving. <laughs> I was waving. Bye. Oh, you were waving bye. Yep. So anyway, we'll put this in the group. We'll send it to you ladies. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you for doing this. We really appreciate you and all your knowledge. Thank your you. Thank you. All right. Bye everyone. Have a great thank weekend. You. Bye. Bye. bye.